Hey guys, it's MC Fixit here. We're working on a garage door that the torsion spring is broke on. You can see the metal bar behind it right there. And one obvious sign that it is broken besides it doesn't work as well is you can start seeing a light out of that corner uh, on the side that is broken. So I'm gonna walk you through all the tools, the supplies, and the know-how. This can be a dangerous process, so please read the full disclaimer before you go about doing this project. One other thing with this project, I am not a professional, but I'm just a DIYer, and I want you to be able to have some of the knowledge that I've learned and uh, be able to do this project yourself. And at any time you don't feel comfortable, please make sure to go ahead and call a professional and get it done. Here are the tools that I used. You can use garage door lube. Uh, it does help make sure everything runs smoothly afterwards. Uh, I used two uh, torsion spring. They're like 18, 19 inches long, half inch diameter. Uh, these have nice little grips on them. Uh, then a uh, 916 uh, wrench and socket. Uh, then a 716 open end and a Sharpie. So that's all I used for the tools. Uh, the supply was just the, the torsion spring kit and I'll have that linked below. So the first thing you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is unplug your garage door opener um, and that will just make sure the electric is off. So you could also turn off your breaker for it. Uh, then the other thing I like to do is go ahead and come over here and go ahead and pull this down this just has that little red end and pull it straight down and that will get your garage door from being able to go up at all, which is really important to make this as safe as possible. So one thing to take note of is what side is painted. Um, that is actually the right side and that is the left side, which is a little confusing, but remember that right side has the red paint and this has none. We're gonna go ahead and start loosening them up this end and you'll want to have your tools for the spring and these are just long half inch and a 7 16 and this is where things can get dangerous so please be careful be careful if you don't feel like you can do this go ahead and stop and uh, call a professional so we're going to go ahead and turn the spring a little bit hold on to it really tight make sure these are all the way up and in here and then you'll put this one uh, then you will slowly release this one out and this will get held on to the garage right here and uh, I'll go ahead and begin to loosen these. I still keep a hand on here. So this is where it can get dangerous. Again, you're just making sure those two screws are loose. You'll go ahead and insert this in. You'll push it up a little bit uh, then Slowly let it go down. And in fact, there just was really nothing left on this. That went ahead and did it. The thing should be wound a lot tighter than that, but we'll go ahead and uh, just double check to make sure everything is good right where it's supposed to be. And that is loose. And this should use the 7 16 as well. And uh, it's at a kind of a weird angle, but you will begin to just twist those, make them loose. Like I said, this is kind of a weird angle and I don't have a real good view on it because of I want the camera to be lined up for you well. And that one wasn't even tight at all. So you'll need to go ahead and take out this right here. It just pops out the side on the back. And then this should allow us to loosen this up a little bit more and have the freedom to push it back and forth once we get the other side out. Same thing on the other side, same tool. So it's gonna be the same thing on this side. We're gonna go ahead and loosen these. And there's not a whole lot of room in here because of the angle on this. So you just gotta kinda make it work with whatever you can. Get one loose and then go ahead and get the other one loose. So just go ahead and loosen this. Sometimes it is a little difficult. And then it'll start to kinda spin freely. 
and then you can just kind of start to unwind it and then this piece should come out nice and easily just like the other side did and then uh, we can go ahead we'll probably need to untwist it a little bit more it's still got some resistance and then we'll go ahead and kind of slide that in a little bit so one thing you want to do is also mark these this isn't necessary because you got so much on the back side, but it does help just to get you lined back up. And then we'll go back to the center. So this is gonna take two uh, 9 sixteenths. And so whichever way it works, it works. You're just gonna put one on one side and then make sure you are removing it on the other. And the hope is that that bolt won't spin and it didn't, but if it does like it is now, you do need to hold that down and go ahead and break this one loose on top as well. This one was the one that was not really in there well. There we go. It won't let you get all the way down on it, which is fine. We'll go ahead and spin those all the way off now. And just try to remember the order that it all went on. You got the washer and everything else. So now that you have the bolts off, you can uh, normally just kind of wiggle these and they will come out. So you have one bolt on the top, one bolt on the bottom. Uh, then uh, we will uh, go ahead and take these off. You'll have to scoot the whole thing down and take them off one at a time. So same concept, we need to go ahead and push this that direction and just be careful. Go ahead and take this off. We will need to reuse that. And here is that broken spring. You can see it snapped off really bad. And here's the other section of it. And then we'll go ahead and get the new spring. This one should not have any of the red on the end of it. It should just have a little bit of white spray paint for the size. And sometimes you do have, oh, I forgot to unscrew them. So it started pushing it. I don't know why these came, probably because of the packaging. They're kind of screwed in already, but they really shouldn't be when you're putting it on there. So just take your time, make sure that is done correctly. And we'll go ahead and slide this guy back on and go ahead and put him right back up into the hole. Uh, then we will look for our line and I'm just going to tighten these by hand right this second to make sure the other side is nice and good too. So we're not like killing it, tighten it down. We're going to go ahead and press that up to there, kind of scoot that more towards the center. Then we'll go to the other side. So now that we have both ends on, we're going to go ahead and come to this part and put it in so we don't have any potential of it kind of falling on us. We won't tighten this down till we get the ends done, uh, but I do believe this will be helpful to just kind of keep all of this locked into place. So you're gonna put it in the same way that you had the other one. And this part is heavy, so just take your time. Do it right the first time. And then you're gonna want your washer and your nut. And go ahead and put it on by hand to begin with, making sure you do not cross thread. It does not come with new ones of these. So it is important that you do not cross thread and break these or else you gotta go buy new bolts. And so we'll go ahead and start tightening those down. 
and it will probably spin on you. So it's 9 sixteenths on both sides. And you want to make sure that's not going anywhere. So give it a, a good amount of torque. Same thing on the top. And so that does kind of get in the way. I'm just going to kind of fold that to the back, but keep your warning on there. That is important. Now we're going to go to the two sides and work on putting the, the cord back in the pulley. So let's go ahead and work the pulley cord in. Uh, there's a little cut out that you'll have to find and uh, you kind of have to push it back in this way and then find it and then pull it out. And then go ahead and kind of twist it. We'll go ahead and tighten this onto here now as well. So you just want it tight so it never comes off and uh, make sure that pulley cord is accurate where it's supposed to go. We will have to double check those in a minute before we tighten down the center part. But right now, this is just really tightening it on to this bar right here. You wanna make sure it's good and secure there. And this is kind of hard because of the angle that these things sit at. It is not the easiest to uh, get that going. So we're gonna go back to the other side and we will have to kind of tighten that back down, but it will make sense in a minute. So we'll go ahead and take this, kind of the same concept. We will need to spin it and we will just put it back and behind here and then kind of pull it tight. And then we'll go ahead and kind of just spin that just a little bit to get it seated. So you will want to go ahead and twist this and make this get tight and then tighten them down. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and tighten this side down as well as best you can and get that all wound up and in. Uh, then we'll go ahead and tighten these two red bolts down. Okay, you want that to be nice and tight, just like that. So we'll go ahead and use the rods and uh, go ahead and start tightening them. So it says it's supposed to be 30 turns, but we will test it. Uh, if it does, if you hold the garage door halfway and it starts to fall, you need to tighten it more. If it's at halfway and it goes up, you need to, to loosen it. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do 30, there's one. So 
So now you've gotten to 30. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these two red bolts down. Let's go ahead and see if that will hold it. We're gonna go ahead and undo it. And that should be locked on there. And at some point it will just kind of hold itself just like that. We'll go ahead and go to the other side and do the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and do the right side now, which is actually the left side of the door, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but uh, that's the way they do it. And so, go ahead. So that's one turn. Remember, we're doing 30 turns. Okay, so that's 30 revolutions on there. Uh, then we'll go ahead and tighten these bolts down nice and snug. Probably can do them by hand a little bit of the way. And I kind of alternate back and forth, trying to give it equal pressure on both sides. This one's a little easier to do and show you because of where it landed on there. but you want these things holding really good. So you are gonna screw them in pretty far. It's just tightening down onto metal. So that rod doesn't let it slip. I think that's good right there. Now we will have to kind of remove it a couple of times until it finally does catch, which it caught really quick there. And so we'll go ahead and give this a test. Uh, and so I will show you how you know if it's tight enough. And so we will go ahead and lift it up. And about halfway, if it starts to go down a little bit, we do need to tighten it a little bit more. So we will need a couple more revolutions and uh, tighten it up a bit more. So we were at 30. So I'm probably gonna go like 30, probably 33 and test it out there. Let's go ahead and connect that back in. And we will need to loosen this just a little. And then go ahead, there's one. And there's another one. And we'll go ahead and set that back like that. And we'll go ahead and tighten these down. And so be careful that this does not ever slip out. That would not be good news. But you do want to make sure these are good and tight. I'm going to go ahead and lift it up. And there's 
where it kind of caught. So once you got that in, we'll go ahead and loosen this. On both sides. It's not loose enough because it is still turning the thing. So that side's loose, this side is not yet. So go ahead and twist it. There we go. Gonna go ahead and do three of them on this side. We'll go ahead and tighten this back down. And we'll go ahead and test it again. See if those couple of revolutions did help. And you can see right there, it pretty much stays. So we are good. We're gonna go ahead and let that thing shut and uh, we'll go ahead and give it a test run. So let's go ahead and test the garage door. You can go ahead and hit the button. And, and that went up nice and smooth. We'll go ahead and hit it again and have it come down. And that right there did it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do have any comments, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. Please be careful with this project.